Welcome to this presentation of the pictorial relating to soil chromatography as a tool for environmental engagement. This pictorial is based on a series of workshops that were conducted as a part of a four year long ethnography of an urban farming community in Stockholm, Sweden. So first the background and research motivation. Recent HEI research has focused on how technologies could create a different understanding of and relationship to nature or the modern human world. Here it is recognized how environmental data can help us to care for the needs and subjectivities of multiple species. However, caution has been raised that the reduction of rich physical phenomena to discrete digital representations narrows focus and potentially disengages users from broader context of use. Answering this caution, HGI research has broadened its scope through including simple chemical tests as part of interactive design. Adding to the corpus of such examples, this pictorial focuses on paper chromatography of soil as a simple and low-cost chemical test for noticing environmental conditions. More specifically, the pictorial focuses on soil care practices. The dominant mode for understanding soil has been to pace its fertility with human demand. This has led to an imbalance in the carbon, nitrogen and phosphorus cycles and depleted soils. To address these issues, the urban farmers focused on alternative human soil relations and were looking for methods and tools to better understand their soils as living networks. Paper chromatography of soil is a visual and qualitative method for portraying its fertility and offers an engaging possibility to learn more about the biological processes taking place in soil and compost. So what are the steps of conducting soil chromatography? The first step is to gather the soil samples. And here the urban farmers gathered samples from diverse places, including those that they expected to be particularly fertile, but also those that they're expected to be maybe polluted or be deficient in nutrition. And the next step of the process is to prepare papers with light sensitive silver nitrate. And this needs to be done in an as dark room as possible. After this, the soil solution is soaked through a wick uh, to the paper uh, through capillary action. And in this way, uh, the matters of the soil solution is divided on the uh, paper uh, according to weight. After this, the soil samples are left in indirect sunlight for development. As the material reacts with light, uh, the different components become more pronounced in terms of color. As already visible in some of the images we have shown, the process was rather messy and not done in a controlled environment. So a lot of the time, uh, the samples ended up something like this. So here, uh, the urban farmers have spilled the solutions on the sample. If you zoom in on the image, you can also see that there are some fingerprints left. However, this was not always framed as a problem. It was also seen as an opportunity for learning. So how do you interpret the chromatograms? A chromatogram is divided into three zones. The inner zone contains the heaviest materials, such as minerals. The middle zone contains the mid-weight materials, such as organic compounds. While the outer zone contains the lightest materials, such as traces of bacteria and enzymes. You can also interpret the chromatogram in terms of its spikes and channels. Spikes are the variations in the outer border. The more spikes, the more different uh, material in the chromatograms. Channels are the radial lines. If channels are pre present, the chromatogram is said to be more nutritious. 
here we can compare two chromatograms. The one to the left is vibrant with much variation in pattern and color, and it portrays a fertile soil. The one to the right is dull with blended colors, no uh, spikes and radial lines. This sample portrays an unfertile soil. The urban farmers used computational technology to aid their efforts of analyzing the samples. So for example here, the area of development was very small. It was hard to interpret and see what was actually going on. So by taking a picture of the chromatogram and zooming in on their smartphone, they could actually uh, see it in much more detail. Another example of post-editing is the increasement of contrast. So the discussion and contribution of the pictorial. The chromatograms typically gave a broad impression whether the soil was good or bad, while more detailed interpretations were harder to make. Notably, misuse and misinterpretation of chemical tests may have serious implications of how the community manages their soil. However, in our judgment of chromatograms as a tool for knowing soil, we must remember the alternative, which is that the urban farming community would have had even less information about their soil without this method. Considering this, the impartial view of soil offered by chromatography is an improvement. Further, this impartial quality seems like a benefit in itself, as it portrays soil as complex, as a phenomenon that we can seldom fully know or control, only care for in continuous correspondence where we notice its condition and capacities to care for us and the crops we grow. This ambiguity is important to maintain in a modern human world in constant flux. So as in any context, qualitative and quantitative methods might complement each other. The role of interactive technologies in this attentive practice may be to amplify the chromatograms through image editing of, for example, scale and contrast, or through more advanced image processing and recognition. The third theme is experiencing soil time. We found that the urban farmers expressed an inherent meaningfulness in depicting a place over time. As such, the method is closely tied to the slower natural pace of, for example, capillary action, chemical reactions to sunlight, and the temporality of soil. The chromatograms illustrate an involvement with soil's circular and slow temporality included in the long, slow time of geological processes such as the breaking down of rock and shorter cycles in which organisms break down organic materials that renew the topsoil. Further, slowing down is an important aspect of creating space in which details can be noticed and reflected on. The inherent weighting in the process of soil chromatography, this had a reflexive value. Beyond possibilities for computationally supported analysis, the findings show how a sensitive and qualitative attention to the chromatograms was appreciated as a fruitful engagement with the multiple contextual factors that affect the health and fertility of soils. In this appreciation, soil was highlighted as full of life and with its own temporality. Such perspectives may benefit the broader fields of citizen science and HEI as we reinvent design modes to focus on interaction in complex modern human networks rather than closed feedback loops between humans and interfaces. Thank you for listening to this presentation.